Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, in studio with co-host Jay Dash. We got our Cork segment for you this week. We're going to talk about Jonas Cespedes and Lucas Duda and if they're going to help the Mets make it to the NL East title. They're leading the division now, aren't they? Please believe. Just passed up the Nats. Yeah, the Mets, they're sitting at 58-50. and 50. They have a two-game lead in the NL East over those Nationals. They're third in the Big NL Apple. in runs allowed with 383. They got a very good pitching staff, and they just brought it over Tyler Clippard for the back end of that bullpen as well, which really helps. But their offense, that was the problem this season. They're tied for 12th in the NL with 398 runs scored, and really the offense struggled most of the season. Uh, you remember David Wright went down early in the season with a back injury. He missed most David of the season. David wrong this year. Well, he is supposed to return at some point here. He is actually ramping up his baseball activities right now. And then Travis Darno spent a lot of time on the DL as well. This is their young star catcher. Now, this guy has always had injury problems throughout the minors, and he hasn't been able to stay healthy in the big leagues either. But they just got him back, and he's a very good hitter. And then... Other players that struggled on this offense are Michael Kadire coming over from Colorado. They expected him to have a big season, and he really didn't. Now he is on the DL. Juan Lagares, people were hoping he had a better offensive season than he had last year because at the end of the season, he was showing speed on the base pass, and his bat picked it up a little bit. But really, he hasn't got it done offensively this season, and defensively, he's one of the best in baseball. But he is having problems with his arm this season, so it, his defense hasn't even been the same as last year either. Girly arm. And then you got Wilmer Flores, who... Cries. He, he yeah. <laughs> oh, I got traded from the Mets. <laughs> Didn't even get traded. Well, would you be happy if you got traded to the Brewers? I wouldn't cry about it in the I middle would. of the baseball field. I would definitely cry about going to the Brewers. Tom Hanks made it perfectly clear. There is no crying in baseball. Well, listen, he's actually had a somewhat decent season with his back, considering he was a shortstop, but his defense wasn't good enough to play shortstop. So, really, as a second baseman, his offense is just okay. But then you got Daniel Murphy as well, who he's having an okay season as well, but people thought he would have a bigger season than he's actually had so far. So, you could see they had a lot of offensive struggles. And then came the deadline, and they made some very nice moves. Like I said, they put... Tyler Clippard at the back end of the bullpen brought him over from Oakland. They brought over Juan Uribe and Kelly Johnson. And Johnson's more of a bench bat, but Uribe, he's playing third base while David Wright is still on a DL. And he's a pretty good bat, and he's very good defensively. But the biggest deal, obviously, Yoenis Cespedes. Now, they almost traded for Carlos Gomez, like you said, but that didn't work Blew out. They, they were in on Justin Upton, too. So they were going after one of the big three outfielders, and they were able to land Yoannis. They also called up that Michael Conforto as well. But Cespedes, he's hitting 294 on a season with a 324 on base, 18 jacks, 31 doubles already, 66 RBIs, and 66 runs. So you can see he's having a big season. The Mets, they're putting him third in the order, obviously, and it's paid off. He's 7 for 22 with three doubles, four runs, five RBIs, a walk, and a K in five games with the Mets so far. And they are actually 5-0 and since they brought him over. Boom. Dude's a gold mine. Every yeah, like time I he said, hits a home run, that big apple comes out of the freaking stadium. Everybody loves it. Yes. I mean, Cespedes was a part of that deal last season that brought John Lester to the Oakland A's. Cespedes ended up in Detroit, and Detroit was never... I mean, both Oakland and Detroit weren't really happy with this guy, and the Mets may have found a great deal here just because people really aren't happy with this guy's attitude, I guess I want to say, although he's not... He's not like a Yesiel Puig where everybody knows this guy's a head case on the field or anything like that. But Psycho in the outfield. We'll see. We'll have to see if it works out long term with the Mets or if they get sick of Cespedes too. But right now, it's paying off in a big way. But it's not really just Yoannis Cespedes either, man. You remember coming into the season, I said Lucas Duda had a ton of raw power. In fact, he hit 30 home runs and had 92 RBIs last season and 514 at-bats. But this season, I mean, he really didn't show his power for most of the season. He's got 21 jacks. That's not bad. Yeah, 21 jacks. But look, going into July 9th, he had 10 home runs. 
July 9th wasn't even a month ago. He, since then, he has 11 jacks, 19 RBIs, and 17 runs in 22 games. Mm, you know what? I think his he ran out of steroids, maybe, and then he just got his new shipment in from Cuba. It's always about steroids in baseball with you. I, mean, I, I don't hear this kind of talk during football season when you know well, every single player. Because football player's, tests for more drugs than baseball. They're does. all on, yeah, but they're all on steroids still. Everybody's on drugs. Some kind of drug, huh? Believe it. The Steelers of the 70s, they were all shooting up steroids, man, all day long. Why do you think when they head slapped you, you got a concussion for four years afterwards? Please I believe. Lie. But, yeah, it's not just Yoanna Cespedes in this offense, even though that was a huge addition because they really needed to add something to this offense. And the fact they're getting Travis Darno back, too, that really helps. And who knows, David Wright could come back within the month as well but Lucas Duda that's another reason for it because this guy has been on a tear recently in fact since the addition of Cespedes he's eight for 18 with three jacks two doubles eight RBIs six runs has five walks compared to six K's so he looks like he likes the addition of Cespedes too and when you look man once Wright returns here this this offense doesn't look that bad at all where does Duda hit does he hit behind Cespedes yeah right behind Cespedes oh yeah then you know he's loving it Please believe. Well, look, you got Granderson, who I said earlier in the year was probably having their best season offensively. He's leading off. They said when David Wright comes back, they're going to slot him in the two hole in front of Cespedes. So you got Cespedes at three, Duda at four, who's on a tear right now and has a ton of, he, I mean, he has a light tower power. And then Travis Darno, who I believe is one of the best hitting catchers in all of baseball. Then you got D Daniel Murphy at second base that... Michael Conforto, who they called up, who you remember I said was the second best bat in the draft the year he was drafted. And then Ruben Tejada at shortstop. Now, there's a little bit. Is he related to Miguel Tejada? Yeah, the, dead the wrong. Beast. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe distantly. Who knows? I don't even know, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I'm not going to say dead wrong on that one because that could actually be a possibility. But he really doesn't have much offense. But outside of him, I mean, if you could put Flores back at shortstop, if he could give you enough mm. defense, I mean, there is a very nice lineup. But even with Tejada, I mean, this lineup looks pretty good moving forward if they can get right back. But, I mean, even if not, they have Uribe at third base. But if they would get him back... Like I said, I just named that lineup. Then you got Lagaris, Flores, Uribe, and Kelly Johnson on the bench as well. So they're pretty deep as well. I don't think they should put Flores back at short because then they're going to need to have a sawdust crew and they're going to have to go out there after every inning and soak up all the tears from his crybaby antics. Man, I mean, Wilmer Flores on. is a good player. Get over the crying come part. Come on, man. People cry in sports all the time. Not on the field. Dude, football I mean, players cry on the field all the time. If you if you win or lose like the Super Bowl, you're allowed to cry. Oh, there it is. If you think you just got traded, you're not allowed to cry on the field. So there's no crying in sports unless you win a championship or lose a championship. That's it. That's the appropriate crying time in sports. Yeah, whatever. But let's look at the potential playoff teams here. You got the Mets, obviously. They're in first place in their division now with the Nats behind them. They're still in it. You got the Cardinals. The Pirates and the Cubs in the Central, obviously. The Cubs, they're sticking around there. I mean, they're only four games behind the Pirates right now. And then the Dodgers and, obviously, the Giants in the NL West. So you got seven teams there, and there's only five spots. What team isn't going to make it? What two teams? All right, let me look at this. I got to I gotta use my in crazy intellectual baseball knowledge here. Yeah. The Pirates, they're out of it. <laughs> yeah, I knew that. Now, was I think coming. the Cubs aren't going to make it. Uh, like I've said a couple times, I think the Cubs are going to falter. And it's tough. The Giants, I think they're going to make a run at it, and they may overtake the Dodgers, but I, I don't know. It's, it's a tough call. I think uh, the Cubs for sure, and we'll go out on a limb and say the Nats miss it. Well, right now, it, it is the Cubs and the Nats that would be out if the playoffs started today. So, you're not really going out on a limb there. I'm going to say the Cubs miss out, too. And I'm going to say whoever wins, just like you, whoever wins this division here that we're talking about, the NL East, the the second-place team Odd is going to miss out. out on the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. But I'm going to say, like I said in... Uh, what segment was it we were talking about the Mets? Oh, that Pirate segment we were talking about uh, the competition what they traded for for the pirates 
But I said the Mets made the biggest moves at the deadline, and I said they were going to win that division. So I guess I'm going to agree with you and say the Cubs and Nats are going to miss the playoffs. But that's pretty crazy Wait, because coming we're into agreeing? yeah, I coming think we into need the to shut season, down the whole show. Well, I should have said who I wanted first, and then you could. <laughs> But, yeah, I mean, it's crazy because coming into the season, the Washington Nationals were mo mostly everybody's favorite. In fact, I think it was our favorite, your favorite, my favorite, 47's favorite, and probably Easy's favorite as well for the NL at least. So it's pretty crazy to see the Nats falling off like they are, but they are getting Steven Strasburg back, so we'll have to see if the Mets can keep the lead or not on the Nationals. Are the Nationals paper champions? Keep tuning in to find out. Please believe. Well, that's it. That's all the time we got for you today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to our Cork segment. Fans, you could follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. You could follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Go to our Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread like that. Check out the YouTube page. Subscribe to that like that. Throw some comments. If you think Cespedes is beat, let me know. I'll tell you you're stupid. <laughs>